Welcome to the belated live stream. Guys, I'm sorry we ran quite late today. We had a number of complications. As you may or may not have noticed, we've had some changes in scenery over the last little while where Slick and I were streaming from my garage and then we were streaming from my garage but a different part of my garage because we had torn apart the live stream set in order to make room for our Intel build guide. Then I I think we went back to the usual live stream spot, but I actually am not 100% sure about this. Then we were gone, and we were in Taiwan, and we did no live stream, and now I'm here. Slick is not here. He is on a plane right now. He's probably, actually, he's probably landing sometime soon, so I should just be like, hey, why aren't you at work? But then he'll probably be like, hey, I go to sleep, and I'll be like, what? You have to sleep? You don't even sleep. Um, and then the conversation will kind of go downhill from there. But, um, but yeah, so he's going to be home very, very soon, but he's not able to join me this time. And as you guys may or may not have noticed, we've got a bit of a change of scenery here. So I'm going to shift a little bit this way. Nope, I want this way. Yeah, this way. Okay, I'm still under the microphone, so it should still all be good. But uh, yeah, we've got a little bit of a change of scenery. We are at the new Linus Tech Tips HQ, which I did a tour of. Oh, crap. Do I have, I'm not monitoring the stream or anything, am I? Let's see. Call Slick, put him on the stream. Um, so yeah, we are in the new Linus Media Group digs, which I showcased in a giveaway video not that long ago. So if you've seen that, then great. If you haven't seen that, then uh, you haven't seen it. Maybe I'll do a tour. Maybe I'll do a formal tour of it once we have it set up somewhat properly. So this is where we'll be filming all of our unboxings from now on, as well as all of our, well, all of our other videos, because quite frankly, I am so tired of having Linus Media Group in my house, taking over my life. Uh, you guys have no idea how much space it takes up with all the computer stuff, all the cases, all the workstations. I mean, walk around your house and then picture you have to have anywhere between four and five people with like workstations set up. And then you have to have video sets and like try to figure out where those would go. And then imagine you have a one-year-old baby who gets into everything and cats that get into everything. Rumble has been so annoying since we moved the company to, uh, to my house. So he, is, uh, he has been a very, uh, very, very challenging piece of work. So let's get into some topics here. We're going to do a lot more Q&A than we usually do because I don't have uh, the sort of gorgeous, um, you know, towering presence of Slick to converse with me. So I guess I'll have to talk to you guys, which is, which is great, uh, which is exactly what I wanted to do uh, right now. So, yeah. Moving right along. Uh, giveaways. Yes, the meme contest. So we had a meme contest on the Linus Tech Tips forum, and the winners have been announced. However, the original idea was that we were giving away a copy of Mass Effect 2. Now, what happened was that copy of Mass Effect 2 accidentally got sort of kicked in the head somewhere along the line. Someone, like, uh, someone janked it somehow or whatever else. So we don't have it anymore. So what I did was I got my hands on three Never Settle bundles, which means you're going to get Crisis 3, uh, Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite, something like that. So you're going to get a Never Settle bundle. Can't remember exactly which games are in it, but they're good. Don't worry. They're part of Never Settle. And we picked three winners because I was at Computex and someone handed me three Never Settle coupons and they were like, hey, here you go. And I was like, hey, I already have these games because I'm Linus. Um, so I have like lots of copies of these games. Well, no, I have enough for me and I have enough for Slick and enough for Diesel. So I've already, I already had three at some point. So I was like, oh, well, this is great because now I have a prize for the meme contest. So I'm going to show you guys the winning memes. Uh, Slick never got back to me, so he got no votes in terms of the winners. So I picked the winners. So if you guys don't like it, then you can email um, I don't care at linusmediagroup.com and we will take care of that never. Uh, no, I'm just sorry. I'm just bugging you guys. Uh, in all seriousness, though, these were the ones that maybe they weren't the best quality or maybe they weren't whatever you know, uh, but they were the ones that sort of tickled me the most, so I, uh, I decided to go with these ones. Here we go, winner number one. Dun, 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 tech story, love it. So Puppet, you are a winner. In fact, I will PM you right now and tell you that you are a winner. Thank you for playing, you win, send me a message. Congrats, you win the meme contest. Ping me back, and I'll give you your code. Pardon the typos, Puppet, if you're watching, but there you go. You won. 
you get a Never Settle bundle from AMD. Dun, 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 dun. So good job. Um, next up, we have. Okay, yeah, Twitter's confusing me right now. So next up, we have. I'm going to load this one up before I actually navigate to it this time. I swear, sometimes Google Docs, I don't know what to do with you. If you don't press enter after a link, then it isn't a link. So that makes a gosh darn ton of sense. Uh, so, okay, no, no, not the O Forums one. That one I actually didn't like that much. But these, uh, this other one is from HK6. This is from, I believe, Slick's first live stream or second live stream. This is from when he broke his... Uh, well, they didn't break anything, but he hurt his shoulder quite badly in a bike accident. And uh, I, I don't know, this just, this just made me laugh. This picture is very captionable. And part of what I liked about this one is that he actually went to the trouble to dig up this picture from one of the very early live streams. So either, either he's one of those people who sort of obsessively screenshots anything that's amusing as they go through life, which is great. Uh, or he actually remembered this moment somehow, and uh, anyway, that, that made me laugh. So I'm going to message HK6 right now, let him know that he's a big winner. Uh, winner meme contest. Good work. Uh, message me back. Just want to make sure that he's actually still active on the forum or whatever else, and that uh, to get your prize. Uh, because otherwise we can save the prize for someone else who's actually still active on the forum because being active on the forum is what winners do. Next up, we've got this one. I mean, this one, I just, this couldn't not win. So this is the Linus Media Group um, Return of the Jedi thing. And I mean, honestly, this one probably shouldn't have won because there are clearly people in this picture who are not members of Linus Media Group. <laughs> <coughs> and I think it's actually very debatable whether or not my cat is actually a member of Linus Media Group. But uh, the thing that the thing that really made this one work for me was the uh, was the Diesel as Princess Leia, because um, well that's just totally inappropriate and I love it. So let's go ahead. That's uh, Young Man Matt. So we're gonna send Young Man Matt his message. Congratulations, you win the meme contest, and thank you everyone for playing. Um, Message me back for your prize. Actually, the, uh, the codes are at home, so that's why I can't just send them the codes now. But thank you, everyone, very much for playing. Slick and I, and actually my wife, actually all had a very, very good laugh at a lot of the pictures in there. Some of them weren't technically memes, but for the most part, they were quite funny anyway. So we've had a big controversy. Actually, you know what? Let's do some Twitter Q&A, just because apparently... Appara oh, okay, yes. Yes, Sean. I will be talking next-gen console, I know. We haven't had a live stream since some of the early news started coming in about Xbox One. E3's been going on this week, so that, ah, oh, this is so uncomfortable. I just figured out why my butt's sore. I have an SSD in my pocket. It's like, uh, yeah, that, that hurts, so there we go. What's in my other pocket? Let's play what's, oh, I do have the game codes. Look at that. Oh, I can tell you what games there. Crisis 3, Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite, and Devil May Cry, apparently. I don't have Devil May Cry, so one of them might come without the Devil May Cry, so yeah, there you go. You'll, you'll, I don't know, I'll make it up to you somehow. Um, yes, I will be talking next-gen console. In fact, some of my opinions might be a little bit unpopular and a little bit against the grain of what most people think about the whole Xbox One, PS4 sort of head-to-head -head right now, but uh, stay tuned for that. Close the blinds behind you, the bottom is light and the top is dark, it's driving me crazy. Joshua, just for you. I'm going to leave those blinds exactly the way they are. Does B-Roll have Twitter? Yes, B-Roll does have Twitter. B-Roll's Twitter is uh, B-Roll underscore the intern or something like that. If you, ch if you look, I, I follow B-Roll on Twitter, so you should, be able to, you should be able to find that there. I got my dad a Seagate Wireless Plus for his birthday, and he loves it. I think you mean Seagate because Samsung doesn't have a Wireless Plus. Um, I love my Wireless Plus too. Mine actually died on our trip to Computex, unfortunately, though, so I'm going to have to uh, RMA that. It's not accepting a charge anymore, so these things happen. Um, yeah. Not a, a true nerd when you carry an SSD in your back pocket. Yes, I know. Just in case you have to, it's like you never know. So it's another joke from that... Uh, the ultimate tech backpack video that we made. Apparently none of them were technically memes. Um, no, I'm pretty sure some of them were, but I don't think any of the winners were. Hi Linus, now you have a new office with spare room. You could charge slick rent to stay there. Um, yeah, I could if I wanted to do that. 
Um, I mean, you know, I don't know that we want to share any space with Slick, and I, we will be renting out the basement suite. However, I will not be posting an ad on Craigslist because it was a huge disaster when I posted an ad trying to sell my motorcycle on Craigslist because a bunch of you yahoos got, a ha got your hands on my phone number, which in retrospect I should have used a, someone sent me a fantastic app they sent it to me on my phone because they had my phone number now where you can get like burnable phone numbers. It costs a couple bucks or something like that. And that is what I recommend using for Craigslist ads now. But uh, I, it's okay though, because as of today, my bike is officially back on the road. I decided I don't really care about a 4K monitor. I mean, looking at how much 4K monitors are coming down in price already, Asus has their new 4K monitor, which is based on the same panel tech as Sharps. I mean, it's using an IGZO panel. So, gee, I wonder where they got an IGZO panel from. So it's using the same panel as Sharp's monitor. Um, it looks fantastic. I saw it at CE, uh, Computex, which I'm like, is really tempting. But I'm looking at how much 4K is dropping already in terms of price. I'm not touching it until it probably gets closer to around $1,000 or $1,500. And that's, uh, that's when, that's when I'll, I'll drop some money on it. So what that means is I no longer have to make a deal with my wife where I sell my bike to get a 4K monitor. So bike's going back on the road. Also part of the reason I had decided against the bike was I was planning to keep Linus Media Group running out of my house for a longer period of time, maybe a year or two. So if I don't have anywhere to commute to and I don't really have a life because I have a baby and I run my own business, I figured I didn't really need the bike because I didn't have to go anywhere. Uh, but now, if I'm going to be commuting to our new office, then I will, I will, need, I will need the bike. Well, yeah, I'll need it. So, uh, Will you do an iSwitch to iOS 7? Probably not. I think I'm kind of done with iOS 7. I guess I could. The thing for me is that, um, like, I don't, I don't know if this is the case with everyone, but I actually use my phone for actual work. And the inconvenience factor that comes about when switching phones and platforms all the time is uh has been a big problem for me during the i switched so um yeah i i don't know i was using my i was using my iphone 4 while i was over at computex just because i had to carry two phones my uh my htc one is unlocked so i was able to use that for my uh taiwan sim so i got a sim card while i was over there so i could get unlimited data it's like 30 bucks it costs nothing it's awesome it's just like a pay-as-you-go, unlimited data, uh, unlimited text, and like 350 minutes of calling. I'm just, who uses their phone this much? But then I did because it was unlimited. It's awesome. Uh, and then I was also carrying my iPhone 4 because I put my Bell SIM in there so that in the event that someone who doesn't pay any attention did text me while I was over there, I would actually get the messages. So I was using the iPhone again for a little bit, and it's not that bad. For someone who's a light phone user like me, it's still very functional, but I'm not expecting iOS 7 to run very well on the iPhone 4, and I'm certainly not spending money on an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 5S or something like that, so I really just doubt it's going to happen. Uh, what changes are you planning for your new pad? I am definitely planning to um, have some storage space, which is great because I don't really have that at my place. I am definitely planning to make some regular sets for things like unboxing. Um, I know you guys kind of like the randomness, some of you do, some of you don't, where sometimes we're unboxing in the middle of a field, and sometimes we're on a rooftop, and sometimes we're just sort of in all these places. But it would be great for the sake of consistency to have it in one place, because then we don't have to fight with the lighting every time, and fight with the audio setup every time, and we won't have so many errors in them. So, so that's something that, uh, that we really need to do. I also need somewhere where we can film fast as possible, much more quickly. We're working on ways that we can smooth out fast as possible a fair bit. And one of the ways that we're going to do that, I know you guys don't like things being scripted, but the reality of it is for something like fast as possible, where efficiency is of utmost importance compared to an unboxing, where we won't really be using this except for, um, hold on. Uh, where we won't really be using this except like if we have some random like specs or something that I can put on there. Like if I can't remember exactly how many stream processors the uh, Radeon HT GTX, whatever the heck it happens to be has, it'll be great to be able to put a couple notes on there for me. But for something like fast as possible where we have to condense the information as much as we possibly can using something like a teleprompter is fantastic. So this is our new teleprompter. We spent like 750 bucks on it. It's no wonder I have no money, right? 
Um, and what this will do is it'll save us an immense amount of time and it'll allow us to tighten up fast as possible to the point where it really will be as fast as possible. So we have an upcoming video coming up on the Tech Quickie channel, which if you're not subscribed to already, go subscribe, Tech Quickie. Um, it's going to be decimal versus binary as fast as possible. And the video is only about two minutes and change long, which is really cool because I think we actually adequately covered that difference between megabytes and mibibytes and terabytes and tibibytes. And we didn't really go into the very fine details, but we gave, I hope the viewer, a solid understanding of why this discrepancy exists in about two minutes, which we wouldn't be able to do without scripting it. So. Uh, there you go. That's one of the changes we're planning. I definitely need like a cool gamer den. So when we're doing things like after party or gaming streams, I want to have like a couch and you know, like a TV and maybe, a, I don't know, maybe a console or something. Maybe put a computer, we'll put a computer next to the TV there. Okay. But if we ever did decide to stream some console games, I do own both an Xbox 360 and a PS3. I don't even know. I was trying to. I was trying to turn the Xbox 360 on the other day, and I was trying to figure out if like there was a power switch on the back, or if there was like some kind of a trick to it. I mean, it turned out that there was a light switch that controlled that particular power outlet, so it wasn't actually my fault. But I legit couldn't figure out how to turn it on. I was like, I actually, I don't know how to do this. B-roll, because he's more of a console guy than me anyway. Um, why a CRT monitor? I am not using a CRT monitor, guys. It is a trick of the light. See, there you go. LCD monitor. There. Uh, it is definitely a trick. I have a CRT monitor, but that's only for game streams because the input lag drives me crazy on LCDs when I'm trying to play platformers. So let's go ahead and turn off my phone because that is going to be a real problem. Actually, it's been less of an issue lately because I've just been systematically blocking every single person where I don't recognize their number when they call me. So, uh, yeah, it was only a few yahoos who caused problems. Uh, someone asks if I'm still associated with NCIX at all. Uh, yeah, I still, I still do work. Oops. I still do work for them, so I still am, uh, I'm still the host of NCIX Tech Tips, at least a lot of the videos that are on there. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we actually made some exclusive Computex coverage videos for NCIX. So we reserved a few of the really cool booths like Intel, AMD, and Microsoft for the NCIX Tech Tips channel. So that was part of their sponsorship deal that had them helping send us over there. So I don't, I don't have a paycheck from NCIX anymore, but we're still, we still work together on things. I still have a lot of friends there. Um, you know, I still highly encourage you guys to buy your computer hardware there. It's not like the way that we uh, parted ways was in any way negative or anything like that. So they, I still fully support everything they're doing and they do the same for me. So no, it's, uh, it's really, really good. You don't have to, you don't have to, you know, work somewhere nine to five in order to have a good relationship with them. So. All right, now this highly controversial topic. <clears throat> and I just want to take some time to explain this. I posted a thread in the forum asking, should we post the Booth Babe video? So Linus Media Group did create a video of the Booth Babes at Computex 2013. It was honestly, it was the last thing we did. It was by popular demand and we had some viewers be upset that we were going to publish this. And so I posted a poll and I basically said, look, unless an overwhelming majority of the forum users want this video, I don't think it makes sense because, you know, it, it's, one of those, it's one of those things where some people will feel very offended by it, whereas others feel very offended that anyone thinks it's a big deal at all. But at the end of the day, it's a very polarizing issue. So it seemed to me that the safest thing to do was that unless like literally everyone was okay with it, I was just going to leave it. And then the other thing that I did was I read through every single post in that thread, all 11 pages of it, 19 pages of it, lots of pages, all 19 pages of it. And I looked at what people's arguments were. And to me, the strongest argument was not sexism this or or sexism that or whatever else, because quite frankly, I'm not an expert on any of that stuff. The part that really stuck out to me was that this is a tech channel. We've never really done that before. Uh, I mean, if we wanted to, we could replace Linus. In fact, if you guys wanted to, you could watch videos on CMHD or there's at least a couple of other tech channels I've seen in the past that do news and they do product videos where it's a busty chick 
and she doesn't necessarily know anything about the product, which happens to be the case with most of the booth babes that we encountered while we were there. But the reality of it is you guys are subscribed to me and I'm not that attractive, but that's what we do. We do the tech. Well, not the tech, the tech is Logan's thing, but we, we cover the technology, we talk about the technology, we aren't attractive, at least I'm not attractive, my understanding is Slick is very attractive. So we cover the technology and we've never really, um, we've never really gone down that path before. So why, why are we doing this? And I thought it was a very good point. However, I've had a lot of people say, look Linus, come on, you're not gonna show it to us at all? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys some highlights from it here in the live stream if you so are so inclined. Otherwise, guys, tune out for a couple minutes and uh, we will be back shortly. So here, I'm just going gonna, gonna to have to go find it because I don't, I'm not 100% sure where it is anymore. Here it is, Computex 2013. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab that uh, screen capture. I'm actually starting to really like XSplit. I was having trouble with it before, and now it's uh, now I'm a big fan. Now it just kind of works for me. So there you go, guys. Okay, so play. Go away, PlayStation ad. You guys will have to, oh, let me know in the Twitch chat if the audio is okay. I have no idea if the YouTube audio videos are all right. Something, something. Yeah, I know, right? I hope I get money for that ad, even though I'm the one watching it. So Computex coverage. So, so basically I just had Slick and B-roll run around at the show. I mean, there's nothing gratuitous about it by any stretch of the imagination. So there's the QNAP girls. Okay, well B-roll got a little bit into that one. They're waving. I forget where she's from. I forget where they're from. Is that something? Can't remember. Is that ECS? I have no idea. I actually wasn't with them when uh, when they did this whole thing. So basically, that's Azrock. Can't remember who that is. But they just kind of walked around the show, got some got some videos, people saying hi, holding products. This guy's awesome. This guy's a rock star. We actually did a uh, we did like a like a, <laughs> that's a wow. Yeah, B roll got kind of into him too. So we actually did like. Um, like a, a mock thing of his like Superman PC thing. Uh, someone's like, go, yeah, Twitch chat's like, go back to Superman, go back to Superman. Uh, this was the WD booth. WD, I know for a fact, actually imported her from like Russia uh, because apparently it's hard to find blondes in Taiwan. She was awesome. She actually made me a balloon animal, which is pretty cool. I think that uh, I think that the definition of, of babes got stretched a little bit with Superman and the uh, the Jokers here, but there you go, guys. So, like I said, there was nothing there was nothing sort of like you know crazy scandalous about it by any stretch of the imagination. But at the end of the day, if if it's gonna upset any of the viewers, it's probably not worth it. And like I said, we've never really gone down that path before, and I think that there's room for us to. Ha include, you know, the booth attractions, so to speak, everything about it, whether it's a motherboard with water getting poured on it or whether it's, you know, an attractive young man or attractive young lady holding a product, then there's room for us to include that as part of the booth coverage, but it's just not really something we've done in the past, so maybe we integrate it later on down the road, um, you know, at the next event or whatever else the case may be. So let's see how upset Twitter is at me now that, uh, that I've gone ahead and I've apparently, I've apparently shown the, uh, yeah, no one seems to care. So there you go, guys. It's one of those things where there's, sometimes there just isn't really a clear right answer. But now I've compromised and that is all we are going to do. Okay, this is fantastic. So I've had people tweeting me all day telling me this scandalous shocker of a news story. Linus, did you hear about this? The Xbox One demos at E3 were running on PCs. Really? Really? You mean the hardware of the Xbox One wasn't done before they had to develop games for it? Oh no, but Linus, you don't understand. They're running on high-end PCs with NVIDIA graphics cards. And I go, really? You mean an x86 platform is being emulated by an x86 platform and a DirectX 11 graphics solution is being emulated by a DirectX 11 graphics solution? 
Wow. And you mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you mean we need a little bit of over, we need a little bit of like extra hardware muscle in order to simulate something else that actually isn't finished yet? Are you serious about all this? Come on, guys. It happens every time. I'm gonna, you know what? I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna Google it now. I'm gonna see if I can, gonna see if I can find this. Um, cause I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. PS3, uh, demo running on PC or something like that. Let's see if we can find a really old news story. 2013. Yeah, no, none of this is, none of this is old enough. PS3, um, pre-launch demo running on PC. Nah, 2009. None of this is old enough, but guys, come on. We go through this every time. Yes, the dev kits are PCs. The reason for that is that the hardware is not finalized for the consoles yet. And I mean, look at how closely Microsoft and Sony are keeping these things to their chests. Sony announced the console without even showing us what it looks like, okay? Microsoft announced the console, showed us the console, um, nobody had leaked it yet. The fact that nobody's leaked it means that very few people were actually hands-on with it. I mean, you look at something like video cards. Every video card launch, there's always a leak. I can tell you guys now that I'm one of the top ones on the list in North America to get any new NVIDIA graphics card. And we are finally hooked up at AMD. My 7990 arrived, so expect some videos to be coming from that, uh, about that once the, uh, once the team arrives back from Korea. So really excited about that. Anyway, I, I, find about, about, I find out about new graphics cards from leaks online, not from NVIDIA telling me about it. So the kinds of people, like the kind of small circle of people that know about something before it's generally sort of rumored and out there, um, yeah, nobody had seen an Xbox One basically until Microsoft announced it outside of like a select few probably within Microsoft Like it wouldn't even surprise me if like below the VP or director level even at major partners like EA Nobody even knew it was going to be called Xbox One or anything like that. So so there you go guys um, Finally accepted Linus is hotter than tasty PC. I really think that is open for debate um, Mr. Mvitkin on the Twitch chat. I really don't think that that happens to be the case at all. But uh, anyway, there you go, guys. That is my sort of take on it. If anything, we should be less surprised than usual that the demos are running on PCs because this generation of consoles is more like PCs than anything we've ever seen before. I mean, back when it was a power PC cores and cell processor, yeah, it was a little surprising that demos were running on PCs. Now, I mean, come on, they are PCs. Yeah. I will be floored if we don't have Xbox One emulators and PS4 emulators very quickly this time around compared to previous generations just because they're so similar. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the next topic here. I actually had to do all my prep for this last night and I relied very heavily on the forum for this. So guys, you rock. Everyone who posts in the news section on the forum, you guys all rock and don't, if I didn't pick one of your topics, then please don't take it the wrong way. But these are the ones I picked. So Horvath93, thank you very much for this topic. AMD stepping up their game. So part of AMD's big announcement at E3 this year was blah, 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 marketing speak. Today we are proud to announce that Battlefield 4 will be exclusively optimized for AMD Radeon GPUs. With that said, expect Nvidia to have like a patch within like a week. They always do. It's not like EA is going to ignore Nvidia because, you know, they optimized a game for AMD. And I, I, I see a lot of sort of, I see a lot of this stuff where people are like, oh, Linus, why did you benchmark that game with Nvidia versus AMD? It's an Nvidia game or it's an AMD game. Eh. By like a couple of weeks after launch, Nvidia and AMD have both pretty much optimized for it at that point with a few notable exceptions. Things like Crisis 2 and that Crossfire bug that was a big issue for a long time. These are sort of the weird exceptions that exist, but those are very unusual. So let's go back to this. <clears throat> Optimized for AMD Radeon GPUs, AMD A-Series APUs, and AMD FX CPUs. EA and DICE have collaborated to ensure that Frostbite 3 based titles like BF4 look and run their best on AMD hardware, etc, etc, etc. We have also partnered with Square Enix to exclusively optimize Thief for AMD Radeon GPUs and AMD FX CPUs. So this to me, 
Actually, the coolest thing about all of this has nothing to do with the Radeon side of the business because optimizing games for GPUs before launch is common sense. AMD and Nvidia both work really hard with game devs to make sure that the games are going to run correctly on their hardware on day zero. The part that really excited me about that was this, optimized for APUs and optimized for FX CPUs. What does that mean? Because optimized for a CPU totally means nothing. Optimized for a CPU means it like is optimized for x86, which is Intel or AMD. It makes pretty much no difference. Unless there's some kind of an instruction set, like back when SSE2 was introduced, that gets a major benefit um, from something that they've implemented in the game. Unless there's something like that, then yeah, no, it's, it's not a thing. But optimizing for APU or FX could mean that because the next-gen consoles are so PC-like in their architecture and because they're going to be using multi-core AMD APUs, we could be looking at optimization for multi-core in a way that we've never seen before. Because even though the last generation consoles used three core and however many cell processors PS3 had, who cares? Because it was so difficult for devs to code for that it, like, it, it, like the, the power of it was so difficult to harness. That's why PS3 games looked so much better throughout the life cycle of the console. Not because it was getting more powerful, but just because they were like wrapping their brains around, how the hell do we put a game on this thing? Um, but these next-gen consoles running x86 processors, multi-core processors, we could finally be looking at a situation where we are fully leveraging our PCs, which is very cool and I'm extremely excited about because things like the lack of uh, environmental physics have been driving me crazy for years. Why isn't this working? Why isn't this so immersive and such a core part of gameplay yet? And the answer was because consoles were holding us back. Um, not the case anymore. Now they're going to be running such a similar architecture, so we could be seeing OpenCL or multi-core optimizations for games that are going to allow us to have all kinds of much cooler AI and weather effects and physics simulations and all that really, really exciting stuff. And that, to me, is the exciting thing about that announcement on the AMD Gaming Facebook page. So there you go. That's my take on that. And I'm going to segue into one of the other topics. Aha! There it is. And this was posted by... Da, 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 da. Sure, whatever. Jawad Quizzy Quasar. Sure, fine. Uh, and that is NVIDIA saying Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are great news for gaming PCs. Because a lot of people out there are sort of running around saying, oh, well, NVIDIA doesn't have anything positive to look at about these upcoming consoles. They're both AMD, AMD, or actually all three of them are running AMD graphics hardware. And all three of them, well, not all three of them, Wii U is like not great in terms of graphics performance, but the other two are going to be very competitive with an entry-level gaming PC. So, I mean, is NVIDIA not going to be selling as many graphics cards on the desktop? The answer is no. The answer is this is awesome. And the way that NVIDIA explains it, I think, is very clear. And the funny, I mean, the funny thing to me about this article, it's actually an article that was linked from The Verge. And I kind of went, oh, mainstream media, you guys are so funny. Because I really don't think there's anyone in the IT space, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, whether it's a Tom's Hardware or whether it's... Uh, you know, um, you know, reviews by Jeff.com, the largest and the smallest. I don't think there's anyone in the actual PC space that could have seen more powerful consoles as anything but a positive thing. But The Verge felt the need to report on this. And uh, this is NVIDIA's fancy little graph that goes, uh, here, let's zoom in. Bloop, bloop, bloop. New consoles raise the bar, and this is important because raising the bar between the best performance that's available on a PC and the performance that's available on consoles, I mean, look at how they've diverged with PCs becoming so much more powerful over time. Um, raising the bar means that we can implement new technologies in the games with the assumption that a large part of the install base is going to be able to use them. I mean, this is, this is the only way to get around companies like Blizzard that make every game as if every computer on the planet needs to be able to run it. Whereas now, instead of, and, and before, we treated consoles like computers. 
So there's this huge install base of people had to be able to run this game. And while you can go, okay, well the PC version, you can have anti-aliasing, you can have higher resolutions, you can have uh, better texture packs and all these things. At the end of the day, you couldn't program like the most sophisticated AI in the world because it was going to make the consoles chug. And you can't have like PC AI and console AI because then you're doing two completely different development paths for the same freaking game, which is going to destroy the overhead involved in what are already multi, multi bazillion dollar undertakings, particularly for these AAA titles. So this is sort of Nvidia's thing is check this out. Back when we had GTX 680 as the cream of the crop and it was up against PS3 and Xbox 360, we were looking at a 13.2% difference, which meant that anything, any game release that had to run cross-platform had to be crippled because nothing will run optimally on this when it has to run optimally on this too. I mean, we're talking a 10x difference plus in terms of performance. Whereas now Nvidia is saying, well, check this out. Now, between GTX Titan, which, by the way, is a $1,000 graphics card, and PS4, which, by the way, is only a $399 console, more on that later, um, now we have only a two and a half times difference. So we'll be able to, they'll be able to make a game that's awesome and runs great on PS4, but runs even better on PC, and you get that extra eye candy and those tweaks there, but we're not being, like, like held down by this, like, horrible horrible machine that's just not even close anymore, which is extremely exciting. So I'm going to go back to Twitter Q&A for a little bit here, guys. And if you want to talk to me, then I guess you can do that. I'm actually kind of, uh, kind of super excited about something that I'm talking to um, someone about. But we're thinking of maybe finding a way and I don't know how it's going to work. We might have to have some special tweaks to the software or whatever else. I have no idea how we're going to do this, but I'd love to find a way to open up phone boards so that you guys can actually call in and talk on the live stream. And there's going to be some more overhead involved for us. We'll probably have to have like what radio show do, shows do, where there's an operator that, um, that actually takes the calls and screens them before they go live. And we'll, we'll figure out sort of how to make that work. Or I can just take over and I can do a segment while Slick screens the next caller or whatever else. We'll figure out a way to make it work. But I'd love to have you guys interact live through voice rather than limiting it to just text interaction. So I'm really excited about that. I had a, I, I had a conversation with... Uh, the guy's there on my way here today, and then we're going to have a follow-up call Monday, and I think that's going to be really cool. So let me know if you're excited about that as well, guys, because it's going to be awesome. Someone asks, best desk? Uh, the one with legs? That's the right height? I really like the vert desk. That's that adjustable desk, but it's like $900 or something like that, so it might be out of reach for some people. But, I mean, honestly, you're asking the wrong person about furniture. You guys are going to be super... Okay, the table I'm using right now is some horrible Ikea thing that's, like, the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. One of the legs is legit broken off. It's propped under it, and then I put the table on it, and then it's just, like, held in place by, like, the pressure of the table. And then this is my chair right now. Like, yeah. That, that is legitimately what I'm sitting on for the live stream. I have no furniture here yet. So don't ask me. Um... Will AMD make a GPU to battle with Titan? Uh, they might not make a single GPU card, but they certainly have the Radeon 7990, which is positioned against Titan in terms of price point. AMD really has to get their, uh, their frame rating fixed driver going, but it should be sometime later this summer or early fall, and 7990 is a legitimate competitor at that point. Yeah, not in terms of power consumption, yeah, probably not in terms of heat output, or, yeah, okay, well, not, uh. I mean, the thing about Titan, uh, the thing about GPUs, you guys, is that it's funny because consumers seem to think that when an AMD releases something, NVIDIA, like, quickly engineers a solution and, like, combats it. No, no, no. I mean, Titan, uh, 7970, um, these cards are in development for two, three years before they actually make it to market. So it's not like... If AMD's strategy, which ha it has been since 3000 series, if AMD's strategy is let's build smaller GPUs and address the high end with a dual GPU solution, so you look at that's how it's been, 3870X2, 4870X2, 5970, and 6990, and I can't remember. They keep changing the numbering schemes. Like, why? Um, but it, that's been their strategy. So... How are they going to counter NVIDIA having a huge single GPU card? Well, they don't. They don't have one. So 
Whether or not they decide to do that in the next couple of generations, we'll have to see, but it'll be a couple of years before we find out if AMD is going to fundamentally change their strategy, which by the way, has been working pretty well for them. Um, as someone who was on the retail side not that long ago, there have been times in the last few years where like, it's been rough for the red team and now is not one of those times. So there you go. I don't know how much of that is, um, I don't know how much of that is never subtle and how much of that is the hardware, the better drivers, but it's been, it's been very solid. Do you think you'll be able to overclock a PS4 or Xbox One? I doubt it. The time on your pick is still synced with China time. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, I can't keep track of which of my clocks are right and which of them are wrong at this point. Uh, right angle 24 pin power connector, any thoughts? It's non-standard, so it'll be great for some cases and not so good for other ones. Slick is on a plane. Why no cat tips? Ah, uh, it's, it's hard to prioritize making videos about the cats when, quite honestly, not that many people watch them. And it's not that easy. Like, it, it feels like I, for a while there, I was like, oh, let's try and do a cat video every day. I mean, their videos are cats. It can't be that hard. The reality of it is, it is that hard because even though they do something interesting every day, it's very difficult to catch it. Have you ever tried to give a cat a command? Rumble, do that thing you were just doing. He'd be like, Meow. So I'd end up with a lot of videos of Rumble being like, Meow. and that's it. That's all I'd have. So uh, it's very, very difficult. Apparently, uh, okay, 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 okay. Tech Fanatic says, you featured two of my news stories before and you forgot to mention my name, so there, consider this a mention of your name. You're awesome too. Uh, can we get an update on my PC? It's done. It's just a matter of making a video about it. I just need like little finishing pieces for around the outside of the window. And Slick's PC is nothing special right now. I've been ragging on him to put his GTX 670 that I intentionally, I purposefully obtained a water block for him for it and he never actually put it in his computer. What's better, NVIDIA or AMD, Intel or AMD? I actually have videos about this. I'm gonna do you the, uh, I'm gonna do you a big favor here and I'm gonna Google them for you. So, actually I'm not gonna Google them for you. I'm gonna YouTube search, which is even better. So check this out, because I have covered these topics. Intel versus AMD, I'm willing to bet. Bam, first hit. Intel versus AMD, 586,000 people watched that video. AMD versus NVIDIA, bam, first hit. 256,000 people have found that video, so uh, you should too. Go ahead, check it out. The answer, if you don't want to watch those videos, is that there is no answer. Can you explain why the comments are disabled in Slick's keyboard incident video? Uh, the reason for that is that we're not, it's not open for discussion. There was a lot of support from the community about saying that, oh, well, you know, Armageddon's wrong. You know, I trust Linus and Slick. Their video was right. The original video was probably right. Armageddon's probably twisting their arms to make this video. No, we were wrong. So it's actually very, very detrimental to have the community siding with us on this when the point of what we're trying to do is explain that we were wrong, apologize for being wrong, and undo any damage that might have been done to Armageddon's reputation because we were wrong. So that is why comments are disabled because it would be extremely unhelpful right now for me personally to have people talking about in the comments how Armageddon was unfair and did this and did that. It is a very serious problem. What we did where we misrepresented the facts. So it is very important that people just watch the video listen to what we're saying, it is the truth, and then just let's try to have this all go away. We'll be more diligent in the future. We owe it to you guys. We owe it to the manufacturers to make sure that we are as accurately as possible representing the facts, but it is not open for discussion anymore. It's done. Uh, so that's why there are no comments on that one. Do I have any official... Do I have any original thoughts on Microsoft's response to people who don't have an internet connection? I don't think there's really much room for an original thought on it. There's only really one thought. Seriously, Microsoft? Really? Um, I mean, even the way that... Uh, I, I look at almost any other solution. I mean, Valve is, of course, the golden standard. Actually, this I think this is one of my news topics, but I guess I'll just get into it now. Valve is the golden standard in terms of treating customers correctly. Sort of. They've done things that have been extremely unpopular in the past as well. No used games. People did not like that at first. That was a big problem, big controversy back in the day. Um, having to check in, having to sign in. I mean, when Valve was pushing Steam, always on internet connections, broadband connections were not as big of a thing as they are now. 
this is a big point of contention between gamers and Valve with people vowing, I will never install Steam, I will never give a penny of my money to this company. Whereas now we look at Steam as like, you know, God's gift to gamers and personally I love it. Not having to keep track of CDs, I don't remember the last time I installed a game off a CD. It's ridiculous. Like it just seems like absurd now. And going back to the console concept for me of installing games off of a disc, is just kind of backwards. It's like, well, can I just download it and have it tied to my account? Like, to me, it's not that crazy. The problem with Microsoft's approach right now is how often it needs to check in. That, to me, is a, is a big concern because even Steam will run for a pretty reasonable period of time in single-player games uh, without logging in. Even things like uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. So Linus Media Group, um, rather than investing in individual licenses of Adobe products, has recently switched over to Creative Cloud. So it's their subscription-based service where, uh, much like Office 365, we don't have to worry about updates, we don't have to worry about having out-of-date software, we don't have to worry about um, paying a massive chunk of money up front to acquire the software, and we don't have to worry, obviously, about you know the illegality of pirating software when you're doing professional work with it. So we got Creative Cloud and it's awesome. Creative Cloud works without checking in for at least a couple days. I know because I tried it. I had it on a laptop. So I had B-Roll's Creative Cloud logged into my laptop so we could install it there so he could use it. And then he was using it on the plane and then um, in Taiwan without logging in, without validating or going online in any way for at least a couple days. Which is, which is great. I mean, I'm never really away from internet long enough that a two or three days or five days is going to be a problem. But having it single day is, um, I mean, I really hope they backpedal on this. I think there's a lot of room for Microsoft to undo the damage that they've done over the last little while by just going, you know what, we hear you and we're sorry and here are the concessions we're going to make. The living room is still very important to us. And they're right. The living room is extremely important. Sony, don't imagine for a... Okay, I'm going to be getting into one of my other topics. So why don't we just... Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, nope, okay, this isn't quite one of my other topics. Okay, so don't imagine for a second Sony doesn't want to own the living room too. If you can... Okay, here. I mean, using a PS3 as a streamer for video... Hello, owning the living room. I mean, they're, they're both moving towards that content consumption as well as gaming model. Don't imagine for a second that just because Microsoft is the one talking about it doesn't mean that they aren't both doing it. Also, don't imagine for a second that somehow Sony is a white knight in all of this. They are taking advantage of some major PR blunders on Microsoft's side. And yes, I have been one to, I mean, if you guys saw my tweets during the Xbox One reveal, I was ripping on it as hard as anyone. But at the end of the day, Sony's sitting there going, oh, well, this is great. Because what Microsoft's doing right now is they are paving the way for us to do the same thing. Look at what's going on with their online services. So how upset were people initially when Microsoft wanted you to have a gold membership in order to play games online? Over time, they got used to it, they accepted it. I think I've gotten away from the living room thing and I've gotten into that other topic that I was looking at just there, but owning the living room, yeah, don't imagine they don't want to do it. Okay, whatever, I'm just gonna tangent off here because that's apparently what's going on now. Um, so, okay, so look at paying for the online service. Sony kind of took the high road and went, well, we don't charge for ours, blah, 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 blah. That's great. Well, hey, next gen, guess what? They're charging. And their charge is going to be very similar to what Microsoft implemented. So if you think for a second that anything that Microsoft's doing right now, if it turns out that it works and gamers accept it, if you think for a second Sony isn't going to implement it, whether it's sometime during the life cycle of the PS4 or sometime later, you are wrong. You're 100% wrong because they will. That's the way that a duopoly works. And quite frankly, Nintendo is so far out of the game at this point and so far behind on online that it's, they're completely irrelevant in the context of this conversation. Sony will follow suit. They will do check-ins. They will limit used game sales, but they might do it with PS5. It's just a matter of time. And at the end of the day, there's nothing inherently wrong to me with tying a game to uh, an account, to a person, 
as opposed to tying it to a physical piece of medium, or in the case of what Nintendo did on the original Wii with the classic, uh, arc classic console and all that stuff where they tied it to the actual piece of hardware. I mean, that was ludicrous. And that didn't get nearly the same negative buzz that Microsoft's getting over what they're doing with the One. So mostly to me, it looks like Microsoft is trying to do too much too fast. They are upsetting their core audience, which happens to be gamers, sort of. Their very vocal audience happens to be gamers, but there are people who will buy Xboxes who aren't gamers. So they're upsetting their very vocal audience, and they are giving Sony so much ammo. I mean, the Sony video was... Um, I mean, it was, it was opportunistic, because it ignores the advantages of, of account-based uh, account title ownership. So I'm, I'm going to play it here, just because it's... Uh, it's in one of the threads on the forum, at least I thought it was here. Anyway, so Sony created a cute little video showing you how to share a game on the PlayStation, which was um, basically just one guy handing a game to another one. And, I mean, that's, that's cute, but it, hold on, I think I, I think I clicked the wrong thing, or maybe I put the wrong link in there, or something like that. I mean, uh, that, that's, that's cute and all that, but at the end of the day, yeah, Sony wants your money just as bad as Microsoft does. And an interesting point that was made, whether it was by a Microsoft employee or whether it wasn't, was that what tying the license to the person does, much like the way, guys, remember, we accept this from Valve, much like the way Steam does, not allowing you sales. I mean, they don't allow it at all. Never mind having a fee for it and allowing you to do it. They don't allow it at all. What it does is it allows more money to go to the game dev, potentially, and less money to be subsidizing like additional licenses down the road. Like, why are we giving GameStop money for this? And at the end of the day, okay, hold on, the argument could be made, well, Xbox One games are probably going to be $59.99. I'll be surprised if AAA titles hold at $59.99 or even $69.99 over the near future. Because you look at how much they cost to make, look at how much money is being hemorrhaged by companies like Square Enix, look at how few developers are even left in the game, and I'll be floored. I mean, you look at, gamers are willing to pay $99.99 plus for something like a limited edition, you know, Halo 18 or whatever we're up to now in terms of the Halo series that comes with, you know, a plastic Master Chef helmet or whatever the case may be. They're willing to pay it. They've been testing the water on this for a long time. Expect it. Games are going to go up in price, and if we can prevent that by preventing used sales, I don't know. Maybe I'm okay with that. I don't know. I, I mean, the reality of it is I haven't bought a console game since Mario Kart Wii, and then I hadn't bought a console game before that since Super Nintendo. Um, maybe I'm just the wrong person to talk to about all this, but I love Steam. Um, I love the way the marketplace works there. I love the way that game pricing is dictated by maintaining a solid run rate for the game devs. So games end up actually priced like what they're worth as opposed to, you know, the packaging involved and the printing of the discs and the marketing materials inside and the logistics of shipping them all over the place and covering the margins for the retailers. As far as I'm concerned, bye-bye retailers. We don't need you anymore. This is, this is software now. Bye-bye. I mean, even the cost of the bandwidth of downloading the game is going to, as long as they pass the savings along to the consumer, is going to cover what you would have spent giving a retailer a markup and paying for the logistics of shipping these stupid things all over the place. So I think that it just has to move on from the model it is now. Microsoft's going to be very unpopular for a little while, but at the end of the day, they're both going to do it. And if you imagine for a second that Sony doesn't want to figure out a way to have you buying Sony movies through the PS4, then you're crazy. I mean, look at what they did with uh, even, what was that stupid console no one cared about, the little one? Not the Vita, the one before that, where they wanted you to buy, like, little discs that you were going to watch movies on. I mean, come on, they've been trying to do that for generations of products now. They're not the hero here. So, there you go. There's my unpopular opinion on what's going on with the whole console thing right now. Uh, right, pricing-wise, $399 versus $499. If Microsoft can pull off Xbox One being this motion-enabled way of interacting with your entire living room, that's really cool. That's probably worth $100 to me. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. Blah, 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 privacy this, privacy that. As long as the privacy agreement is such that 
it, my butt's covered in terms of if I'm sitting there picking my nose, there isn't going to be a video of it on YouTube somewhere. As long as the bases are covered on that and it's just accepting my gesture inputs or whatever else, and I know that they have a patent for how many people are watching the content and whatever else. And I'm, okay, you know, I'm going to actually, I'm going to launch into that after this as well. The patent for uh, charging for content based on how many people are viewing it. That could be awesome or it could be terrible. So hold on. Um, if they can make that work, that's going to be incredible. It's going to be a completely new way of it. I mean, look at how hard the TV guys are trying to push this with Samsung Smart TV with their gesture. It doesn't work at all. The one platform that has a chance of doing this is Xbox One right now. And the reason for that is it actually has the horsepower to back it up. It's got the 1080p camera. It's got, it's got the horses. It can actually do it. It has Microsoft behind it, for better or for worse. Yeah, Microsoft isn't perfect, but at the end of the day, I'll trust their software more than I'll trust you know, Jack's utility, unless it's been around for 10 years, like something like FileZilla, where you know that it's going to kind of work and it's fairly simple. I mean, an operating system is phenomenally complex. The fact that they are able to do it at all is outstanding. Um, so if there's someone who can pull it off, Microsoft can pull it off. And it is a cool way to interact with your TV in your living room, change the channel, volume up, volume down, walking away and having things pause. I mean, if you could set it up, I mean, imagine this for a second, guys. If you could set it up so that you configure things in your Xbox One so that when you personally walk away, it pauses. And when anyone else does, it doesn't bother to pause. I would do that. <laughs> I don't care if my movie pauses if someone else goes away. That, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, there's problems with it. Like if I say, um, Hold on, I can't remember what it is. Can't even, I can't even remember anymore. So, what is it? Uh, whatever, I can't even remember how you turn off an Xbox with voice command, but I think it's like Xbox off or something like that. I mean, if I say that and it turns off your live stream right now, that's, a, that's, that's, that's bad, but they're gonna figure it out. They're gonna find a way to like voice cancel the content that's actually coming out of the Xbox or noise cancel it or something like that. They will figure it out and I'm pretty excited for what they can do. I mean the problem being that Xbox One isn't as powerful. It's not going to have as much raw power as PS4 in terms of running games. But at the end of the day, it's not like it's a generation behind. We're not talking about the difference between the PS4 is going to run at 1080p, Xbox One is going to run at 720p, and it's going to be a night and day difference. We're going to be talking about some extra details on PS4. It will look better. But neither of them are going to be anywhere near con or a PC anyway. So whatever. It's, it's all still console stuff. So crap. What was that thing I wanted to launch into? It was something to do with, it was something to do with Kinect. Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. Okay, if anyone in the Twitch chat can tell me what the thing I said I was going to talk about was. Uh, come on, guys. Okay, something, something, something. Spine. Ah, yes, yes. How many people are watching? Okay, so your initial reaction to this is shock and awe and horror, right? Imagine if the content companies were charging you for how long you sat in front and watched it or for how many people you had watching it. Now, for things like pay-per-view, this is going to change the whole paradigm for you where you have 20 buddies come over, you get a pizza, you have one pay-per-view and you watch it and that is going to be a real bummer. But for some types of content, this could be a huge blessing. And think about it this way, guys. It's one of those things where you have accepted this already. Okay, hold on. Going to a movie. Well, you pay for how many people go and you pay for how many people watch the movie. Huh, okay. So you accepted that before. Whereas now, all of a sudden, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to pay for how many people watch it in your living room and you kind of go, whoa, hold on, hold on a minute. Now, assuming that the rates are better, depending on how few people watch it, this could be awesome. If it kind of starts at $19.99 to watch the movie or whatever Netflix charges, uh, whatever with their monthly service, or if it starts at what we're used to paying now to have one person watch it and everyone else is an incremental charge, that's a big problem. But if we're looking at a situation where if it's just me watching it, I can pay like two bucks and watch a movie, that could be awesome. For the forever alone types, that could be fantastic. For people with big families, it could be negative. So I think what we have to do with a technology like that is we have to go, whoa, hold on, okay, let's find out where they're going with this. Because remember guys, at the end of the day, if for whatever reason you are unhappy 
with the way that Xbox One implements any of these patents or any of these technologies, you don't have to buy one. No one has a gun to your head. No one is telling you, buy an Xbox One or I'm going to pop you. Because they're not allowed to do that yet. Um, but that's the way to vote. Anyone who is upset, and we said this on the last live stream, anyone who is upset about the way that Xbox One is unfolding, or PS4 for that matter, if they decide to implement some of these policies, or you know, all of them, or none of them, whatever it is, you don't have to buy it. Just don't buy it. If you don't buy it, it'll all go away. All of these problems will go away instantly. If nobody, if not a single person, ran out and paid $19.99 or $24.99 for a Blu-ray movie, that would go away. The pricing would drop. That's how it works. I worked in retail. You have to move product. If you don't sell anything, you go out of business. So don't buy it and it'll go away. And if you do buy it, then you're part of the problem. Uh, so hold on a second. You pay extra in a theater to cover the cost of the theater facilities. Well, you pay extra to consume content because of the cost of producing the content. I mean, as someone who makes content now, um, I personally benefit more the more people watch it because I get to deliver more ad impressions. Well, okay, now hold on a minute. What if someone like um, some kind of a video streaming service, what if they didn't even charge more for the content? What if they just got to count more ad impressions if more people were sitting and watching it? That's cool because that doesn't pass any cost on to the consumer and it benefits the producers of the content and it benefits advertisers because they have a much better gauge for how many people are watching their content. Not everything is tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. And like I said, Microsoft may implement this in such a way that it costs you $60 to sit and watch a movie with your you know, 18 children. They might. I don't know. And if they do, don't buy it. And if they don't, and if it ends up being something that's very benign and benefits everyone, like the scenario I just gave you, well, then it's a completely different story. Then all of a sudden, everyone's going to be clapping their hands going, wow, Microsoft, I can't believe you thought of this. This is the best thing ever. Because now our content, I mean, okay, imagine this. Whoa, okay, here, it's like brain explosion. Imagine your pay-per-view was cheaper the more people watched it because they could deliver more ads or something like that. Or you could have an option where uh, you could go, oh, I'm going to have 30 people here. We're going to validate it with Connect. So we want the pay-per-view stream for free and feel free to chunk in ads here, here, and here. What if you had options for how to pay for your content? Ugh. So there you go, guys. Might be good, might be bad, probably bad, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because I'm not going to pay for it anyway. All right. So let's move on to... You know what, let's do some Twitter Q&A because I think I said I was going to do some and then I never actually did it, so. I have no idea what time it is. I have no idea if my wife's going to come get me. I have no idea how any of this is going to work tonight. Apparently I have a missed call. Hopefully it's not from her. Apparently I have a oh, oh, Skype message from one of the mods on the forum. Not sure, not sure what he wants. Um, and there's your competitions. Okay, well, I can mention that. So apparently in the coding section of the... Uh, Linus Tech Tips Forum, there is a little coding contest. So the first, uh, so it's a 100 line program. You want to do something. So it's called the Under 100 Line Challenge. So guys, if you're a programmer, go check it out. That might be, might be fun for you if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, okay. So someone says, hide your friends behind a shroud when watching movies. Well, okay, maybe. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where if you get caught, it might be a problem, much the same way as like, well, go in, the, uh, go in the HOV lane or go in the diamond lane or whatever they call it in your area. Just put a dummy in the other seat. Like that, people got in trouble for that. Uh, and I am going to be talking about this. That, that is a big problem. That is like a, whoa, that, that's like, I can't even, okay. Uh, why should you pay more just because more people are in your house? Well, because more people are watching the content. It's not so much why should you pay more. It's why should the content creator get more? I feel like the more people watch my live stream, the more advertising revenue I should get. Am I wrong? So it's, it's not always about consumer rights necessarily. Sometimes it's about content creator rights or sometimes it's about um, someone else's rights. And if there is a way that Microsoft can do this in a benign way, I don't want to, I don't want to keep going on this topic for much longer, but if there's a way that Microsoft can do this in a benign way that benefits everyone, then it's fantastic. But if not, then, then it's a problem. And you don't have to buy it. There you go. 
Linus, come on, how would someone ever be able to check in your private home how many is there? It's BS and it's never gonna happen with the Connect. They have a patent for this. Read the news. Um, Linus, are you going to talk about the new NVIDIA Wicklow display driver killing cards? Haven't encountered it yet. I might not go out of my way to install it. This is, this is actually something that's interesting to me about GeForce Experience with automatic driver updates. And that's why I personally am gonna opt out of the automatic driver updates because sometimes updated drivers can cause problems, particularly with very old titles. And since I haven't played a new game in like months, um, sometimes the games that I do play tend to be older titles. So it's beneficial for Joe wants to play the latest Call of Duty and beneficial honestly for probably 95% of gamers out there or even more than that but personally I probably won't implement it because I do like to take a bit of a wait and see on the latest drivers um, I, I don't know that there's any validity to it it's possible that it is killing cards it's possible that it's not um, I know there have been situations in the past where there was a driver update that was causing the fans to not um, go fast enough, which was causing cards that were probably already on the brink of failure to fail prematurely, uh, but I have no idea what's going on with this one. What do I think about the new Mac Pro? That's actually one of the topics I have lined up for later. Uh, I haven't looked into it enough, so I'm going to be taking a very sort of thousand foot view of it, but uh, sort of give me, give me some time on that. Why is gesture control so amazing? If you walk away, it pauses. Really? People are too lazy to press a button on a remote. It's not about people being too lazy or too not lazy. I mean, uh, you know, the same thing got said about cell phones. What? People are too, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. They can't just, you know, use a phone in their house. Yeah. Every advancement, there are fuddy-duddies who don't want to see it. So, whatever. Um, it's going to happen. Everything in Star Trek will happen at some point. So, you can fight it all you want, but whatever. Uh, Sony has been king when it comes to proprietary devices like flash on their cameras and their special SD cards and charging. Yep. Yeah, actually Sony has been one of the worst in terms of consumer friendliness with their hardware. I mean, as someone who has a Sony camera that I'm looking at right now, um, the, I mean, they want money for the firmware update to unlock the 4K functionality that there was no sort of, they didn't say it was going to be paid when I bought my camera. They want money for the module that they didn't really say anything about. They said it would just be an SDI output. They want money for the recorder that uses a proprietary card format. I mean, guys, don't pretend Sony is your friend. Sony's not your friend. Microsoft's not your friend. Google's not your friend. Apple's not your friend. They're not your friends. So there you go. I'm not your friend for that matter. Unless you're watching my live stream, in which case I'm definitely your friend. Um, of course they'll try and sell movies considering they're focused on 4K players and Blu-ray. Yeah, of course they're going to try and sell movies. They want your living room just like Microsoft. We don't complain about Steam because the games are cheaper, especially with Steam sales. Well, I'll be interested to see what happens with Xbox One. If they do bring us cheaper games, then we could be having a very different conversation. Steam has awesome sales. No one does that with console games. Stay tuned. Um, yeah, but with Steam, there was never any expectation of buying and selling used games. Of course there was. PC gamers expected it, whether they delivered it or not. Um, and, I mean, in much the same way that Steam told you up front, you can't sell this used, I was still surprised when I found out I couldn't give a game to a friend. And gamers who buy things up front on an Xbox One and know that they can't sell it used or whatever else, they'll know that too. Or they'll be surprised, just like me. Have you got a call from Nintendo about your live play? No, I haven't gotten a call from them. They just, uh, they claimed one of, the, one of the videos. They monetized it, whatever. I mean, we're talking on the order of like several dollars. Like it doesn't make a big difference to me one way or the other, but I was just amused because we talked about that and then they, they monetized our video. Um, did you see his face when Xbox said the cost? No idea what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, AMD 5 gigahertz CPU. Yeah, I'll be, that's actually one of my topics as well. I have a lot of topics still. What time is it? None of my clocks are right. I have no idea what's going on right now. Uh, do you think I should get a 660 Ti or a 770 or wait for 760? Sorry, I can't really comment on unreleased products, although I can tell you right now that I will know at some point. Would a GTX 770 do a 4K display? Yes, it would. Um, it probably, yeah, a 4 gig one would be better though. Hi from Red Deer. Hello. What are the sexy red boxes behind me? Oh, well, these are unboxings I'll be doing soon. This, my friends, is a Zonar Phoebus, which I'm extremely excited to check out. We're going to be using this for our 900D Ultimate build with liquid cooling. 
And this, my friends, is a Rampage 4 Gene, which we were supposed to do a build with a couple months ago, but it got delayed in shipping and blah, 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 blah. So we'll be doing a tiny MATX build uh, with that one. That's going to be really cool because it's going to have a six core. It's going to be in a Silverstone SG09, so it's going to be super tiny. It's going to have a Quadro and a GTX card. So it'll have CUDA acceleration for DaVinci Resolve. This is going to be Diesel's new workstation. So it'll have CUDA acceleration for that, and it'll have 8-bit uh, or 10-bit or whatever the high bit color depth uh, output is for his ProArt 8-bit panel so that he can do all of his color work on one monitor and he can do all of his other work on another monitor. He wants a third monitor. I was like, really, man? What, do I, what am I made of money? No wonder I have no money left, right? Um, I missed the first 20 minutes. Are you in the Limes Media Group house? Yes. Xbox One meme. Sorry, I can't really click links during the stream just because I never know what's there. Uh, wow, there's a lot of people talking about the new NVIDIA driver. I haven't even heard about this yet. Oh, I've been so busy. I have a dead pixel. What should I do? Nothing. Sorry, man. You got a dead pixel. There's not a whole lot you can do. Am I the only one who finds white PCBs super sexy? No, you're not. I actually bought a Sapphire uh, 690G motherboard. It was an MATX board. In fact, it might be in my parents' old media PC, which might be over there. I might go check that out later. It might still be in there. But I bought it just even though I knew that a Sapphire motherboard was probably going to be a problem. They had no experience with motherboards. It was like their first one. But I bought it just because it had a white PCB. It was awesome. Why don't you use Skype for call-in? Uh, because we are looking for someone to sponsor the call-ins because right now the live streams are a money sink. Just to pay myself and Slick to sit here and talk to you guys for an hour and a half, I am losing money. So there you go. Uh, so I'm trying to find a way to have the live stream be somewhat sponsored or whatever else. Did you hear about the 200 watt TDP? I didn't hear it was a 200 watt TDP, but I'm not surprised. Uh, should I upgrade to Haswell now? Sure, why not? Um, it's not like Intel's going to be releasing anything new. AMD's come out right and said they don't have anything new coming for 2013 that isn't an APU. So, yep, go for it. Uh, do you recommend redundant radiators and pumps for extreme builds with Titans and extreme CPU? Um, I never really recommend dual loop. But it is never a bad idea to put a couple of pumps in serial because then you get not only increased pumping head pressure, but you also get redundancy in case one of the pumps dies. And more radiators is always better. Even if you are not actually, um, like even if you don't really need that cooling power, then what you can do is you can turn fans off when your system's idling if you have a more advanced fan controller. And then you can just use as much radiator as you need, and then as your, your system loads and your water heats up, you can have the fans kick in. That's what, that's what I do on my system. So yes, more radiators is always better if you want a quiet system. Okay. Uh, why can't monitors go right to the edge for a true bezel-less experience? Uh, the reality of it is, is that it's about more than just having the monitor set up on your desk. So if you just manufactured a monitor and moved it straight from the production line to a desk, it would probably be fine. But they have to design them to withstand packing and shipping and being display models in stores and all of these things that they're going to undergo. And that is why you cannot have a bezel-less monitor because someone is going to dunk it up and the manufacturer has to cover their butts on that. So let's move into our next topic, uh, which is, I mean, Everyone wants me to talk about all of these topics that I had lined up, so I guess I better, better do it. Uh, the new Mac Pro. So this one was submitted by Jam Dude. Unfortunately, it seems... Oh, wait, what? That's the wrong link. Dang it. Well, whatever. The new Mac Pro was submitted by someone. Uh, so the new Mac Pro is a little cylinder, it has three PCBs, it has dual AMD workstation grade graphics cards, and it has like a 12 core CPU or something stupid like that. Very cool. Um, very cool form factor. Apple's basically banking on Thunderbolt being the only way people expand their PCs. I mean, the last Mac Pro upgrade we got was what, almost a decade ago or something like that in terms of a major Mac Pro upgrade. I don't know however long it was. I pay very little attention and I'm very sorry for that. But the last major Mac Pro upgrade we got was a long time ago. They're updating it in such a way that I think they're forward looking enough that they are expecting to not update it for a similar period of time again. So they're basically going to themselves, okay, we are expecting by that time, nobody is gonna upgrade storage internally in their computers. I mean, Apple's never really been about upgrading the storage in their Mac Pros. I think the most they've ever had is four expansion slots for three and a half inch drives, which is abysmal. Um, 
I mean, especially when you compare it to that, uh, that ASRock motherboard that was on display at Computex that supports 22 drives directly attached. So, okay, so there's that. Uh, they are banking on, I think, pretty much every peripheral connecting to the computer, whether it is something more basic like a USB thumb drive or whether it is something more advanced like an acceleration card such as um, like a Red Rocket which is for working with 4K files with it, that are in the red raw format that you shoot on red cameras. So something like a red rocket, I think they're expecting to run externally over Thunderbolt, which is basically PCI Express. So having things like external PCI Express boxes like the Magma 3T, which we checked out recently, and unfortunately we're just waiting for drivers to catch up and support to catch up so that you could have external graphics cards and external accelerator cards and all that kind of stuff. They're expecting all of that to be external at some point in time. All the storage, everything. So it has six Thunderbolt 2, so that's 20 gigabit per second ports. Um, actually, Anantech has a great everything you need to know about Thunderbolt. Go check it out, or, or Thunderbolt 2. Go check it out. It's awesome. It covers this new tech very thoroughly. So they've got six of those, and I look at it and I go, cool. Um, great value right now if you want something that's very forward thinking, very powerful and priced reasonably, but we've seen this time and time again. It actually kind of drives me crazy when viewers or members of the forum say, whoa, don't buy Apple computers, they're overpriced. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. At launch, I mean, if you guys looked at the MacBook Pro that had the, um, I think it was the black one or something like that. So a couple generations ago. When that one launched, I actually priced it out. So the first Intel-based MacBooks, the second ones, I was looking at them because, man, they're beautiful machines. I mean, until, um, until we had PC manufacturers like Acer building stuff like this, I love my S7, although the new Gen S7, oh my goodness, I need one, uh, it fixes all my complaints about this one, better battery life, better touchpad, ah, a little slightly thinner. Anyway, so before that, we didn't have a PC manufacturer who was even close to Apple in terms of the build quality of their machines. Now we have Acer, we have Razer, we have the Asus ZenBook Infinity. The landscape has changed. So I was pricing those out. And the reality of it was, if you give Apple even a couple bucks for having a better chassis, and that costs money, trust me, it costs money in the tooling, it costs money in the actual manufacture of each unit, they were pretty competitive at launch. The problem is that Apple doesn't update their pricing in any way. And a lot of the time, they're not updating the products. So you look at something like the last generation Mac Pro, where the graphics card options were a complete joke. Like, it was just stupid. We're looking at graphics cards that are like, do, do they really even make these anymore? But at launch, it was fine, and it made sense. So buying something like a Mac Pro right now, if you want to be forward thinking, and you want to you know, have that Thunderbolt connectivity and all that stuff, may actually make sense. It's probably reasonably competitive with the other solutions that are out there if you want the functionality that it enables. But, and this is that double-edged sword, because part of what makes that Mac Pro last so long is the fact that Apple's not going to significantly update their hardware, and they're not going to significantly update their pricing. So if you were to hold out for three years and be shopping for a workstation again, it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense. By then, we're going to have Ivy Bridge E or Haswell E or whatever next generation platform that's available on the desktop if you build yourself a proper tower. Um, you're going to have, I mean, still, internal expansion is going to be king for a while. Um, SATA 3 is not going to be too slow for hard drives for a really long time, even though SSDs are outpacing it already. So if you wait a few years, a desktop's going to make a lot more sense than something like a Mac Pro. It's all about timing. Buying an Apple at launch, good idea. Buying an Apple sort of a year after launch when they're close to another refresh is a terrible, terrible value. So there you go. That's my take on the new Mac Pro. Oh yeah, I mean another example. When, uh, when Apple first launched the iMac with the 2560 by 1440 IPS display built in, it was slim, it was sexy, the hardware spec was outstanding. I tried. Someone asked me, Linus, can I build a PC like this for this price? I want to buy a PC, but I, otherwise I'm just going to buy the iMac. And I tried to make a PC that was competitive. And the part that I kept getting stuck on was that gorgeous 27-inch display. PCs took, uh, the PC guys took so long to figure out that high resolution displays don't need to be that expensive. This was before you could get cheap ones on eBay. So I was really frustrated because I was like, no, I, I can't build you an equivalent machine because that display is really expensive to buy standalone. 
And, uh, and that's one of the things that Apple's so good at. I mean, those AMD GPUs, those workstation grade graphic cards, if you really want workstation grade cards and you're buying a PC, you want it to compete with Mac Pro, you're probably gonna have a hard time right now, but that'll change. Anyway, so I'm done with that now. Um, ah, yes, AMD. Are actually, you know what, let's do, let's do Xbox is launching in 21 countries. What are they, high? So the, the headline here from Jam Dude on the forum is Xbox One unplayable in 180 countries. So if you check out the article on Game Debate, I really hope that this is just like, I mean, I'm going to list the countries that you can actually play an Xbox or one game in. Like, I'm going to list the ones you can because it's a much shorter list than the ones you can't. Australia. Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Russia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, United Kingdom, and United States. Seriously? So, okay, no India, no China. So right, right there, bam, that's a third of the world, gone, done. There's your market cap. Um, no Japan? I mean, the odds of any of them actually buying an Xbox One anyway, I suppose, are pretty slim because, you know, Sony and rah, 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 and all that. But really? No Greece? Okay, maybe no one there can afford one anyway. But I'm starting to see a pattern here. No, no, but seriously. I mean, not having, not having the product available in these territories is just um, unbelievable to me. I mean, no Poland, no Argentina, no Peru, no... I mean, the only country in all of South America where you're going to be able to use an Xbox One is Brazil. And yeah, Brazil's a really important market right now for a lot of business but uh, no Portugal. So heaven forbid that you're someone who lives in Spain and you get a job offer in Portugal and you move there and it's going to be region locked. The software titles won't work. You won't be, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm running out of gas on this one because I don't even know what there is to say. So we're going to go to the Twitter boards. What do you guys think of Xbox One launching in whatever it is, 21 countries, which is just the most ludicrous thing. Apparently, I'm slightly out of focus. I'm not too worried about that right now because I'm tired. Um, host said the cost of an Xbox One, the look on his face, and the lack of response in the crowd. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, Spect out 27-inch IMAX gives way better performance per dollar than a Mac Pro IMO. That's cool, but I mean, remember, it's always in flux um, when things get updated or don't get updated. Personal rig living at home. Yeah, the personal rig will be staying at home. I'm super sad about the, uh, the fact that I'm going to have to move my 10 gigabit uh, network infrastructure to the office here. I'm so sad about that because I've been enjoying that. And then I'm also going to have to move my like wicked NAS machine. So I'm going to have to go back to being a mere mortal with a NAS instead of having my Arica 24 port RAID card with like my like beast RAID 6 array and all that. Um, yeah. Boo, boo, boo. Anyway, have you ever done any system admin work before? Like Active Directory system? No, I haven't. Uh, invite the guy from Fractal. He'll join us again at some point. Uh, could you do a custom water cooling loop from a PC, please? Nope, sorry. Uh, go check out the forum. There's lots of people who know as much as I do about water cooling, if not more. What's your opinion on iOS 7? You know what? I think Marcus Brownlee actually covered this really well. So if you guys haven't uh, checked out any of his videos before, uh, youtube.com slash Mark. It's, it's kind of a weird spelling of Marcus, but there we go. YouTube.com slash Marcus Brownlee. Go check him out. He does great videos. And he has one here called Where iOS 7 Features Come From. And it's basically, it's, it's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like Tech Syndicate's Has Apple Ever Really Invented Anything video where it really looks at where the ideas for these in all likelihood came from. Xbox One will only have a 500 gig hard drive which can't be replaced. Yeah, uh, that to me is actually one of the most insane things about Xbox One. I was even, uh, I was actually giving, I mean, I mean, you guys probably know this if you follow at all what we've been doing for the last week or so, but I was at Computex with WD and we were hanging out with those guys like every other day. And at one point I was just like, guys, what's the deal? How did you let Microsoft get away with some goofy proprietary hard drive that can't be replaced and is 500 gigs? I mean, Western Digital is showing, was showing off at Computex seven millimeter, one terabyte drives. They're not even expensive. 500 gigs is last gen already. That's last gen, that's like unbelievable that this is acceptable in this day and age. And when you consider that Xbox One has a Blu-ray player, 
we're going to be looking at games that you're, you're going to be able to fill your Xbox with what? Like, like about 20 gigs per disc. So five, like 25 games, your Xbox One will be full. I know people who have like an order of magnitude larger game libraries than that for a given console. And the fact that you're not going to be able to run off the disc, that's one of the most insane things about Xbox One to me. In fact, that particular spec doesn't seem to be getting as much attention as I think it should be. Uh, techie with an SSD in the back pocket, but uh, something... I think we're too zoomed in right now because for some reason I'm not able to see people's whole tweets. But a mortal network at home, well, it'll still, still be gigabit. I mean... What is that test bench I've seen you using? It's the high speed PC tech station. CD Projekt Red can't even play their own game in their own home country on the Xbox One. Yes, that is a big problem. It's okay, no one cares about Xbox One. We'll wait patiently for PS4. Yeah, that's gonna be a big problem too. I, I suspect PS4 is gonna be just as bad at some point. Corsair K95 video soon. I don't know if you uh I don't know if you spotted this or not, but yes. K95 video will be coming soon. This is actually um that shelf behind me is serving as sort of a uh, to-be-unboxed pile, so there's a lot of stuff on there that's uh, going to be unboxed over the next little bit. Wait for the 4930K or pick up a 3930K now. Honestly, 4930K is not going to be rocket science in terms of the performance benefit you're going to get. It's going to be Ivy Bridge, or pardon me, Sandy Bridge versus Ivy Bridge, so we're going to be looking at about 10% improvement in IPC, and it's going to overclock slightly less, just like on the mainstream platform. So. Personally, I, I don't know if I'd wait. It's going to be on the same platform, X79. Mac Pro equals trash can for your spare hardware. Not really. Um, not familiar with that, unfortunately. Since Poland, yep, yeah, yeah, Witcher 3 devs cannot play their own game on a retail. Is the online requirement that perfects Xbox One from... Uh, same reason Game for Windows Live is only available in the same 27 countries. Yep. Yeah. I'm in Portugal and can't buy one. Not that I would buy one anyway. All right. Can you please talk about Shadowplay on the GTX 700 series? Is it a built-in capture card or is it just software? It's both. Um, all Kepler GPUs have built-in H.264 encoding, which means that as long as the card is capable of displaying the output, okay, which it is, um, and it has the H.264 built-in encoder, it can very quickly and easily, with very little overhead, take that video stream and it can make it into a small, lightweight file that is... Uh, going to still be very high quality, so it's very, very cool. Uh, GTX 260, I am not convinced there's any good reason to have a dedicated PhysX card. I've never really seen a benefit. All right, all right, all right. So Drew wants me to talk about AMD's upcoming 5 gigahertz CPU. So let's go check that out. So AMD has been pretty serious business about picking up where their competitors are leaving off in terms of things like gaming bundles and in terms of things like catering to the enthusiast. So AMD's new FX9590 uh, was on display at E3 with a Radeon HD 7990. This was submitted by Sir Numbers. And okay, the system's powered by 16 gigs of RAM, new AMD hardware. So I've had a lot of people tweeting at me about this CPU. So the CPU <clears throat> will be pile driver based. We already know this because AMD already said several times we don't have a new CPU architecture coming this year. It'll be somewhat refined, but because it's pile driver based, because we're not looking at a new process node, because we're not looking at a new architecture, it will be a power hog and it will output a ton of heat. We also know that it's not going to overclock that much. People have been asking me, how do you think this chip will perform? It will perform, wait for it, this is a suspense moment. It will perform just like an 8350 at 5 gigahertz. I'm going to let that sink in. I don't know. I get, I get a kick out of this. Like when people ask me, how do you think, uh, before the GTX 770 launched, how do you think 770 is going to perform? Based on what we already know about it, which is that <clears throat> it's very similar to GTX 680, but it has faster memory. To which I would reply, it will perform just like a 680, but it'll have faster memory. So probably in higher resolution, it's going to do better. And yay. Um, so we're looking at a very similar situation. Is this very cool? Yes. 
I hope that AMD does what they need to do to capture the hearts of the enthusiasts, to sell more of these chips. I think it's good for their business. I think being able to drive up their ASPs is very positive. I hope they bring some bundles into it. You look at what they've been doing on APUs with things like SimCity bundles, and as unpopular as SimCity might be, it's still a game. People are still playing with it, and it comes for free with your CPU. You can't really complain too much about it. If they do the same things they're doing on the graphics side with CPU, we might be looking at a rejuvenated AMD that is able to sell some CPUs, and if they're able to sell some CPUs, they're going to have some money to dump back into R&D so that they can develop better CPUs. And there's no one who is more happy than any hardware enthusiast to see a strong AMD, because a strong AMD means Intel cannot be complacent and cannot ignore the enthusiast because the enthusiasts, even though they're a very small market segment in terms of sales, are extremely loud and they drive sales in the other market segments. So as long as AMD is competitive, it is very, very, very good news for the enthusiast. I mean, the rumors, I don't know if it's true or not. I've seen some tweets tonight about a 200 watt TDP for the chip. That's, <laughs> that's awesome, I guess. That's crazy. I mean, I personally, don't really care about the TDP of my CPU as far as I'm concerned. Bring it on! Give me a good reason to have a thousand watt power supply. I have one anyway. Bring it on! Give me a good reason to have water cooling. I have it anyway. Um, so I personally don't care, but there will be situations where it'll be a problem. I mean, I would, I probably wouldn't deploy a 9590 or whatever they end up calling it in my, uh, in my computer room. And the reason for that is I'm right above my garage and it gets extremely hot in the summer as it is. With the GTX 590 in there, the 5870 that's in my wife's machine, as well as the fact that I'm running a six core already. And remember, this will be a significantly higher heat output than my six core is already. That room already gets really hot. And when you turn on the computers, it gets really hot. And having hotter computers is definitely a bad thing. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's great. I think it's cool. I think it's Fine that AMD is first to the five gigahertz barrier. I think Intel could have done it if they'd cared. Um, I think AMD could have done it sooner if they'd cared as well, but we've been on a rush to sort of more cores as opposed to higher frequency for a while. So I think it's more just like a feather in the cap as opposed to something that's actually meaningful. But I think that if AMD is going to continue to cater to enthusiasts and gamers, I think that's a really, really positive thing. It's good for their business. It's good for gamers. It's good for the industry. All right. I'm, I'm going to lose my voice eventually here, so we're probably going to have to uh, we're probably going to have to sort of call this quits pretty soon here, guys. Can I use an H100i fanless with? And the question continues, but I'm already going to tell you no. Oh, fanless for idle? No, probably not. Um, you're probably going to need to have at least them spinning at sort of 300, 400 RPM. How come you guys left the booth babes out of the Computex coverage? It was by request. Uh, the NSA got to Linus. RIP Linus, guys. What? Um, if all I want to do is game and I don't care about TV and stuff, what's better, PS4 or Xbox One? With any console generation, it's always going to come down to exclusive titles anyway. So whichever one has the titles you want to play. So there you go. Not selling the Xbox One in China. So it is made in the Asia region. They won't be selling it there. Well, yeah. I mean, they'll probably add more countries at some point. And remember, a lot of the problems with selling it are not going to be necessarily Microsoft's fault at all. Sometimes there are regulations that prevent them from easily being able to import them and integrate their services. So... We'll see how it goes. You should use Google Voice instead. Yes, I probably should. I have a paid Skype account right now. I'm not that happy with it. And uh, Diesel has a Google Voice account and he's very happy with it. So have you seen the new MacBook Pro? It is a trash can. It's a very powerful, very cool piece of hardware is what it actually is, but sure. Um, thoughts on E3? Honestly, I've paid so little attention to the E3 coverage other than the ongoing train wreck that is Microsoft's PR for the Xbox One. So unfortunately, I can't really comment. I'm sure Slick's been paying more attention to it than I have. So we'll have a bit more of, uh, a, bit more of a discussion on the gaming side of things uh, probably next week, I would think. This is weird. This thing shifted. This, uh, this thing, I can see through it now to the background. Um, OK, three new interactions. Please talk about the Haswell controversy, where Intel cherry-picked review samples and retail chips run significantly hotter. Um, you know what? I, 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 I heard, sort of caught wind of it. I'm not aware that that's anything that actually happened. And honestly, um, from my experience with guys like um, hardware manufacturers who aren't Intel, I, I really doubt it. 
I think the, the problem here is that the people who are getting, okay, so a couple things. Number one is when I got briefed on Haswell by the motherboard guys, not by Intel, they basically said, look, there's a huge range. There's gonna be ones that are awesome. There's gonna be ones that are totally bunk when it comes to overclocking, and there's gonna be a lot in between. Um, I had the opportunity to have my hands on a cherry, I had a cherry picked CPU directly from JJ. It was his second best one out of, I think he binned about 50 or 60 of them. And that was in case my sample from Intel was a horrendous overclocker um, and I couldn't actually do my overclocking guide and show any kind of reasonable result whatsoever because the JJ has had his hands personally on chips that were not very good overclockers at all. So that to me indicates a couple of things. Number one is there's a range out there and the guys who get a bunk chip are very likely to be the ones complaining that their Haswell chip runs hot or doesn't overclock very well. Okay, so, but we already knew this. At least I knew this. Uh, number two is that indicates to me that even ASUS, so in the case of JJ having a ton of chips to bin from, got everything from great ones to not very good ones. Okay, so not all the ESs were cherry picked. My ES is very mediocre, very run of the mill. It's an Intel confidential chip, so it's probably as review sample as anyone else's, and it's middle of the road, maybe a little bit on the better side. Um, I thought it was better than it actually was when I was filming the video, but what happened was JJ explained to me there are a few more things that I could do to push it that would indicate if it was a really good one or not, and it's kind of, I think it's about top 35% or so, but it's nothing super, super special or anything like that. Um, so I think what's happening is people are getting Haswell chips, they're not happy with them and they're complaining. Whereas the people that are getting them and they are happy with them are not complaining. Um, and honestly, I, again, this is one of those things where I kind of go, well, I'm used to this, I've seen this before. Um, I'm not necessarily, I, I don't think either Intel or AMD has particularly cherry picked review sample CPUs in a long time. I don't think they really focus on the enthusiast overclocking scene as much as they used to, to the extent where they actually used to go through and like bin CPUs for famous overclockers like Fugger, and there was a huge controversy over that. These days, I know for a fact, Andre Yang, who won um, eight of the events at the OC main event at Computex, binned his own CPUs. Intel didn't bin them for, them for him and send them to him. So I don't think they really do it anymore. With all that said, I don't know this for a fact. This is all my speculation based on what I know. So I, I don't know if that happened. Um, anyway, so we used to have to do this anyway. There was a time when, you know, um, even something like a 2500 plus, which was a legendary chip. Some of them were great overclockers. Most of them were pretty good overclockers and some of them weren't very good. Mine wasn't very good. Um, I'm just trying to think if my Optron 165 wasn't that great. It was a little bit better than my 4400 plus, but not much. And they were supposed to be amazing overclockers. Um, my E6600 was awesome. I had that thing at four gigahertz, 24 seven. Mind you, I had chilled liquid on it. What else? What have I ever had like a, like a bunk chip? I mean, my 7870 doesn't overclock worth a damn. Um, even though it's an MSI, whatever aftermarket cooler and custom PCB. I mean, sometimes a chip just doesn't overclock and that's bad luck. And with Haswell, I already knew, and I know some of the manufacturers already knew there was going to be a much wider, per larger percentage of chips that just weren't gonna overclock. So it used to be on forums like Extreme Systems or Extreme Overclocking back in the day that there was a very regular churning through of chips. Like people would actually be able to sell a golden chip or a decent overclocker for more than retail price. And oh, uh oh, my battery died. Okay, I guess we're back, sort of. 
This is my battery that's dead. Uh, I don't have the charger for the FS700 here, so I, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's not moved to the new place. It's actually going to be a really busy weekend this weekend, so yeah, it's going to be going to be kind of crazy. Uh, you know what I should probably do is I should probably do the uh, the build of the week. Uh, I had oh oh snap, I had one sent to me that the uh, the mod team wanted me to include. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. Oh, apparently audio's out. I wonder why audio's out. It's very strange. Blah! Hmm. Doop, doop, doop. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that right now. Hmm. I didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Audio, you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. It's definitely getting picked up by the camera. Three to four seconds. I don't know what three to four seconds means, man. Got messages that I don't understand. So hopefully the uh, hopefully the audio is back now. I have no idea. Oh, audio is out. Audio is desynced. Ah, I see. Well, I think there's something we can actually do about that. If I go in here and I refresh this, it'll either crash the stream. Did it fix it? Hopefully we're good. All right. So let's do our system of the week. So apparently I have a thing in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting uh, getting Skype messages that are like, my bad, and I'm like, yeah, way to, way to go, way to be like helping me and not doing it adequately enough. All right, so we have two different system builds of the week, and we are going to look at... For a limited time only, by... Um, this, all right, add screen region, and we're just going to add the whole screen, so you guys will see all my junk. So, first up is Andre Vatour with Andre's personal Z77 rig. So this is the more attainable rig, and yes, that is another. Uh, oh wait, no, that isn't. That's uh, what? Wow, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm losing it here. What is that? A 650D? I don't even know. That's a 650D, right? I haven't seen a 650D in so long. I don't think that's a 650D. Someone help me. Apparently, I just shouldn't even do system build of the week because I, there's a reason I leave this to slick. Yeah, apparently it is a 650D. So he's got an Octa NH uh, D14, although, oh my goodness. Okay, you know what? We're not doing system of the week yet because holy freaking crap. Oh, and also I had this like super small. You guys were looking at this the whole time. See, this, 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 is, this, is, this is terrible. Um, okay, so Noctua's booth at Computex. I actually had a lot of people asking me, what was your like, favorite thing you saw at Computex? Their active noise cancellation heatsink is unreal. It works. They had the demo they had there, had the heatsink, and it had a shroud over it. It had a fan in the middle. So the shroud serves a number of purposes, allowing the air to be channeled more directly. So they figured with one fan, they were able to get similar performance to the successor to the NHD14 that they also had on display there. Okay, so it channels the airflow better, and the shroud creates a controlled environment for the active noise cancellation that basically vibrates the blades to cancel out the noise of the spinning of the blades. They had a microphone next to the heat sink that you could put on like noise canceling headphones so you could actually hear it in the hall and they could go active noise canceling on, active noise canceling off and you can, ah, oh, you can hear the difference. So it's not one of those things where it's like they've created a completely silent fan that makes no noise. It doesn't work that way. But what they've done is they've taken the fan noise from like, hmm, pardon my humming, to like, like it's a much lower hum and it basically sounds like much lower RPM fan operation except that it's not. It's freaking awesome. So I am super excited about that. Anyway, we can go back to our, we can go back to our build of the week, which I have completely lost now and have no idea where it is anymore. I downloaded it. There it is. All right. So we're going to go back to scene four 
And we're going to put this one on. Wait, what? There we go. All right, so we've got a 650D, Noctua fans, which I, of course, am thrilled to see. NHD 14, MSI Twin Frozer 3 graphics card, AX850, extremely clean cable management. This is the kind of build that pretty much anyone can do. You can see how the SATA cables are routed very nicely. I love when things line up like this so you can take the right angle SATA cables right out of here. This is one of the benefits. Someone asked me earlier on the stream about 24 pin power connectors. Having a, a right angle 24 pin power connectors, it'd be great to have that somewhere like here so you wouldn't have to have this loop coming up here and it could be even cleaner. In fact, I'd be, this would be kind of cool to see a graphics card manufacturer put the power connectors on the bottom of the graphics card so you wouldn't even have to run these cables over here. You could have a machine that almost looks entirely cable free. So here's the SATA cables for this and then everything in here is tucked in here. Love modular power supplies for this. Very clean cable routing on the back. I personally don't have the discipline to do this. I always end up with a rat's nest on the back, but when people do it, it looks fantastic. This one is awesome. Actually, I had picked one that the, uh, that the forum moderation team did not give me, and this was the one that I picked to showcase. So this is G5 by Shawi, and check that out. So his build log is awesome. It has a ton of different pictures. Check out the build log section of the forum. Go look for these two builds. So he took a G5 case. So remember guys, this is the old G5 with one optical drive, completely gutted it, and did a sweet liquid cool build. In fact, these two pictures <laughs> that were picked out by the mod team were actually the same two pictures I picked out for my own. Gelid wings, looks outstanding, beautiful compression fittings, SLI graphics cards, man this thing looks nice. Uh, and check out the Builds of the Week thread in the forum for links to these so that you can go and see all the details that go into creating machines of this caliber. They're absolutely outstanding and we are just so thrilled to have like that kind of awesome stuff go on on our forum. Um, next, to actually, I actually have another topic that I did want to talk about. EA wants to stop being hated. Good luck with that. So that was submitted on the forum by... Da, 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 da. Oh, whoa, what? Why is Cloudflare doing something here? Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Well, can't find it anymore. Sorry, apparently the thread's gone. Uh, if people, oh, this is something. If people change the, uh, the titles of their threads on the forum, the links all die, so I don't recommend doing that. Uh, but EA wants to stop being hated. Let's see if they decide to buck trends, like um, not requiring games to phone home as often as they can. I mean, Microsoft's made it pretty clear that stuff like Always On is at the discretion of the game devs. So if EA wants to not be hated, they're going to have to speak with actions, not words. And I just kind of doubt it right now. Um, PCI Express SSDs on the new MacBook Air. So Anantac had an article about this. I'm going to link first to the forum submission that linked to the Anantac article. So this was from Kare Kanin or whatever, however I say that. So Apple didn't say it during the show, but it seems the MacBook Air got more than just a CPU upgrade. The transfer speeds are far higher than any SATA 3 disk and averages around 790 megabytes per second reads and 740 megabytes per second writes. The flip side, however, seems to be that it's a proprietary solution. So no, unfortunately, this is not an M2 a solution or NTG F or whatever that standard is. That's PCI Express based SSD. This is a proprietary solution. So you probably will get aftermarket upgrades at some point, but it'll take a while at best. And I mean, that's just like Apple's way of doing things. And I'm going to have a bit of an unpopular opinion here, but um, I, I, okay. Even when we went, okay, when we went from hard drives to SSDs, we had a technology change. SSDs are dramatically faster than hard drives for random operations. Random operations. So even compared to the SATA 2 interface, an SSD that's being read, read from or written to very heavily, very randomly, is not saturating that bus because we're still limited by the NAND flash and that's going to continue to be an issue as process nodes shrink, the flash inherently gets less high performance. As we move to technologies like TLC, particularly write speed is going to be lower performance. So, okay, already for the part of your computer where we're really benefiting from an SSD, which is not sequential reads and writes because you don't copy files back and forth all day, folks. We already didn't even care that much about SATA 3. So you go back and look 
at SATA 3 SSDs, a lot of the first reviews, uh, drives like Vertex 3, did they perform better? You know what? I got to take this. I'm going to put the stream on hold for a minute. Sorry, guys. Hello? And we're back. Sorry, the wife called. Had to take that. Very important, very important call because if I don't take that call, I'm stuck here. B-roll left without me. So there. Okay. Uh, unpopular opinion. I don't think it matters that much until we see a dramatic improvement in the complexity of the controllers and until we see some kind of change in the storage medium that we're using on these drives because NAND is not getting high performance, particularly over time. I mean, we can spread it out over more channels, but then we're looking at a controller complexity increase, which we haven't really seen much of in the last little while anyway. Uh, or we can switch to something other than NAND. I have no idea what the future holds in terms of storage, but you can, much like hard drives being the be all and end all forever, not. Uh, S, uh, NAND flash is not the be all and end all forever necessarily either. So back when SATA 3 SSDs first launched, a lot of the reviews took the time to test all the SATA 2 SSDs on SATA 2 controllers, all the SATA 3 SSDs on SATA 2 controllers, and all the SATA 3 SSDs on SATA 3 controllers. And while we saw, particularly in things like peak reads and writes, dramatic improvements going from SATA 2 to SATA 3 for these enabled drives, when it came to more real-world simulated testing, things like PC Mark or things like an Antec storage bench, the difference wasn't that dramatic. I mean, yeah, it's great to get another 10% or another 20%, but when we're talking about a world where most people are still using hard drives as opposed to SSDs anyway, um, the upgrade from a hard drive to an SSD versus the upgrade from an SSD to a SATA 3 SSD or a PCI Express based SSD, this upgrade is not going to be that significant compared to this one. And much like going from a single core to a dual core and then going from a dual core to a quad core really didn't impress people the same way that it did sort of the first time around. So 800 megabyte per second sequentials are cool, but sequentials haven't meant anything in a very long time. And another step toward, okay, this is probably to me, what this looks like is another step towards putting storage directly on motherboards on the desktop. I suspect within another five years, um, we may see soldered CPUs, we may see soldered storage. You might buy, like, you might just buy a computer. Like there might be like a Core i7 computer, an i5 computer, and an i3 computer, and that might be what we end with. Maybe it's not five years, maybe it's 10 years, but um, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Let me see if there's anything left here. And I think that is pretty much it for this week. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the live stream. I'm sorry there were some complications with the lateness and with the sort of blacking out and the audio desync and all that stuff, but you guys are awesome and I appreciate you tuning in and I hope it wasn't boring with just me uh, versus having Slick here to keep all of us company. And uh, good night, everyone.